to look at many of our urban centers today is to look at how badly we have neglected the importance of urban planning. In Season 8 of Daya, we visit the old urban centers of Luzon to see how our ancestors maintained a sense of order. One that created spaces for communities, their economic and cultural activities, their daily lives. Indeed, the entire fabric of a solid, united community. This is Season 8 of Dayal. Halina't dumayo, doon po sa amin. In Season 8 of Daya, we explore the heritage sites of Luzon and heard the voices of the advocates who continue their efforts tirelessly. In the final episode for the season, we see how rivers and bodies of water are the original heritage sites that birthed cities and towns, commerce, cuisine, entire cultures, and rituals of faith. In Pateros and Malabon, the fluvial parades honoring their patrons are proof that great faith is born on the waters of heritage. The Pateros River is the western border of this town. This river has seen the history of the town as it grew from a visita or barrio of Pasig in the 18th century. It was separated as a town in 1799, but it does not have a separate parish or a church that was built exclusively for the, for the town until 1815, when a Augustinian priest was assigned to stay in Pateros by the name of, of Father Behil. And the first order of the day when he came to Pateros was to build the church, which stands now right at the middle of the, the town itself. And it is in the middle, in between two rivers, the, the Pateros River on the, ref, on the left side and the Santa Ana River at the right side. Still later, it was consolidated with Taguig and Montinlupa before finally being declared a separate political and geographic entity. The most important structure na tinayo sa Pateros noong panahon na yon ay ang simbahan. Siya ang nag-iisang structure na gawa sa bato, sa adobe. Siya ay may mataas na tore at sinulat ni Buseta na may maganda itong struktura at, at magandang disenyo. Uh, ang pananampalatayan ni kay Santa Marta ay parang likas na, na sumibol dahil sa pananampalatayan ng tagapatero sa kanyang kalikasan. Ang ilog ang pinagmumulan ng kanyang kabuhayan. Dito niya inaalagaan ng mga itik na kinukunan niya na itlog sa paggawa ng balot. At dito rin niya kinukuha ang mga isda na kanyang kakainin. Pero dumating ang panahon na ang may mga buwaya na kumakain ng mga itik na naroon sa ilog at nakasira sila sa magandang agos ng kabuhayan. Pero hindi nila pinatay ang mga buwaya. Pinaamo nila ito sa pamanggitan ng isang babae na tinatawag nilang si Marta na sumakay sa ibabaw ng buwaya upang payapain ito. So, ang nangyari nun, lumapit yung mga taga-aguho, aguho pa ang pateros nun eh, sa simbahan. So, pinayuhan sila ng isang pare na sabi, mag kayo kay Santa Marta kasi sa buhay niya, meron din siyang taraston dragon na napaamo. Ngayon, ang nangyari, ang, ito daw si Santa Marta at di umano ay nagkaroon ng milagro. Nagpakita siya dun sa mga tao at eventually, yung buwaya na nanginginain ng itik ay nawala.
in the church of San Roque, there are three devotional images. The ancient wooden santo enshrined in her own altar is referred to as Matandang Santa Marta. The ivory-headed image is called the shrine image. While Batang Santa Marta is a callejera, the image brought out for the feast day celebrations. Dati, yung piyesta, hindi ginagawa sa kalde, sa ilog lang. Pagoda lang yan sa ilog at pinipili ng mga ninuno namin ang kabilugan ng buwan para gawin ng pagoda kasi nung araw, hindi pa uso ang ilaw, ang generator. At ang liwanag ng buwan at ang ilaw ng kalburo ang siyang tanglaw. No? So, eventually, nag-evolve na to. At uh, bumaba na yung prosesyon sa kate o sa lupa at sumasayaw na rin ang pandango sa lupa. Today, the great fluvial parade that once marked Santa Marta's feast day has been altered drastically. When geographical features like rivers are altered by urbanization, the rights of faith must adapt. Yung salitang pasubo ay isang malalim na salita na na bumabagtas pa hanggang sa bago dumating ang mga Kastila. Ito ay ritual pa rin na ginagawa na dati ay nung malaki ang ilog, ginagawa ang ritual ng pasubo sa ilog na kung saan doon nananahan ang mga buwaya. Pero dahil sa, sa haba ng panahon, napabayaan ng ilog, na bahaya ng maraming tao ay hindi na nagagawa ang pasubo sa ilog. Nagkaroon na lang ng, ng pasubo sa daan. Ang pasubo ay isang paraan ng pagpakikisama sa, sa kalikasan. May mga bagay tayong nagagawa sa kalikasan na maaring matawag natin na nanuno tayo. At kailangan nating gumawa ng paraan upang mabawi natin ang pagkakanuno. At ito ay sa pamamagitan ng pasubo. Ang pasubo ang magre-restore ng balance between dun sa nagawa mong kapinsalaanan sa kalikasan at sa pagbubuo mong muli ng magandang pagbabalik mo ng magandang kalikasan. Sadly, the once great Pateros River, where many fluvial parades in honor of the saint were held, has shrunk in size, along with many of the tributaries that once coursed through old Pateros. One cannot mention the town of Pateros without the iconic balut coming to mind. The duck egg delicacy and its production has become synonymous with the town, both its culture and its economic progress. Kami yung kinikilala na maker of the most delicious balut in the Philippines. Nung, nung panahon na yun, ang source of duck eggs natin are very cheap. We are, it's coming from the rivers of Pateros, Pasig, Taguig, and around Laguna Lake. Pero uh, siguro mga 10 years ago, napulyot na lahat ng rivers. Eh. And there is no single duck in Pateros. There is no single duck in Taguig. No? Sa Pasig, wala na rin. At ang uh, duck farm, duck racers uh, around Laguna Lake, uh, kokonting-konting na lang. The duck racers uh, napunta ngayon sa mga rice grinders, sa mga duck, uh, rice farms. 
dahil doon libre eh. Pinaka, pinakakawala nila yung mga duckling uh, hanggang sa ito ay umabot ng six months ready to lay eggs. Ang pagbili ng sariwa ang umpisa noon. Tapos, uh, kung, mahina, kung mahina ang init dito, ibibilad niya yung sariwa. Ngayon, yan, yan, yan ilalagay yun. Dito namin, inaano yung init. Ah, kailangan talaga ni Rorotate? Oo, kasi para, para yung sisiw, nakahalo. Yung sisiw niya gumagalaw. Lalong lumalakas ang sisiw. The traditional methods of making balut have now given way to technological advances. Ito yung incubator. Ano ang difference nito sa traditional? Dito, kapag dumating ang itlog na sariwa, yung fresh egg, ilalagay mo kaagad sa loob. Pagkatapos, hindi mo na siya gagalawin. Kaya mo lang gagalawin siya pagdating ng 11 days. Dahil sisilawin mo sila, ikakandel, sisilawin mo sila para ihiwalay mo yung buhay sa patay na itlog. Nung araw, yung method dati, isa-isang pagsisilaw ng matong, isa-isang sisilaw ng itlog. Ngayon hindi, yung 200, dito lang namin lalagay. At ang aalisin lang namin dito, yung patay nga yung pen. Now, ito naman, how do you control temperature? Di ba sabi ko kanina? Kailangan kinokontrol mo temperature, no? Now, how do we do that? There is a thermostat. Ayan, that's an equipment that regulates the temperature inside the incubator. So, hindi na, hindi na problema sa, uh, sa worker because it's the, it, it's the machine that, re, that regulates the temperature. What we are doing to uh, get back uh, the premium we used to uh, enjoy when Pateros was uh, famous as the only maker, the center of balut production, the center of bal uh, balut sa puti production. Ngayon, masarap pa pagkain. So we want to get back there by having this. If Pateros has the heritage delicacy that is balut, then Malabon has its own heirloom culinary staple in the flavorful Pansit Malabon. Culinary scholars see in this savory staple a guide to Malabon's geography, history, and natural bounty. Richard Bautista, a proud son of Malabon, traces the history of what was once known as Tambobo. The old name of Malabon, Malabon na Botas, was one before. It was the town of Tambobo. Tambobo, as you would see, the old, it's an old Tagalog term or very Tagalog term, meaning rice granary. So why would our town would have rice? Where, as you would see, how, what's, the, what's the area? So. Uh, so that alone correlates to, wait, some, something is, there's trading. Plus, you would also relate as well, what is the present name of the town, which is Malabon. Malabon came from the word, which means and correlates to the trade as well. Ma, plenty, labong, meaning watery mud. As you would see, it correlates to water. Water that gave life to many things. In olden days, towns were established through the estuaries or the waterways. So like the blessing here in Malabon, the waterways, and there's this place called the Dagat Dagatan, which was a lagoon, which is very integral to the trading. It's a very good docking site. So Malabon has, had, has or had many products from the central plains brought in by the waterways. You have rice, you had sugar, tobacco,
why Malabon had this peculiar town development. It doesn't really have the usual setting of the, the industrious, the prosperous, the, those people living around the plaza. You would see them scattered from north to south of the island of Malabon. Though, if you are still to apply the laws of the Indies idea, you would still see a certain setting that it did, it was applied, but mutated to the local setting. Then the other things here, it's, it grew organic. So from the usual setting, you have, you have the old town here, then someone came in, there's available lot, there's this available land that became there, they built their house. So it, it was a very organic development. Most especially, the mindset of the locals is very industrious. But we make it a point that we establish our inner selves more than anything else. Like, would you believe that to date, we still believe in Palabra de Honor over contracts? So that alone speaks of soul. You trust. Trust is the most important thing. So you really take care of your reputation. Malabon's patron is San Bartolome, the apostle who was skinned alive and whose attribute is the bolo. But while San Bartolome is titular patron, the Immaculate Conception shares the heart of the people. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception is December 8th. We have December 8th alone nationally. But here in Malabon, we have it for three days. December 8th, as we call it, Fiesta, the, uh, the National Fiesta. December 9th, Fiesta ng Manging Isda. December 10th, Fiesta ng Baya. On December 9, which became a highlight because there's this fluvial procession carrying a miraculous image of the Immaculate Conception, which dates back to the 17th century or 18th century, I would say. So that one day, they parade around town, the image. Then at the end of it is this fluvial procession or the pagoda. So it lies to the river, that lies to the Montas River. Back then, it, fly, it went around the island of the Botas, the Botas River, going around that place. But sadly, back then, there were hardly materials to show. I mean, you may find a material here, a material there, but not a combined one. The world just knows of the rotting image, but we know it's a very vibrant place and we, had, we have so much here. So on my own, I decided to promote it. Then all, later on, we, I, I found out or we found out that, hey, you're doing this, you're doing we're, we made it a point to really reverse the image of the decaying promotion of Malabon. So somehow good enough that people found it and learned about it and discovered it themselves. That you would see heritage, you would see food, you would see music, you would see many things around. And what I am more concerned right now is really the promotion and the re-establishing 
di palabra di honores, petosis. That's one thing people are missing now. And that's one thing I would like the world to really look at how we deal with palabra de honor. Because how could you be in a progressive place if you don't trust each other, if you don't respect palabra de honor? Santa Maria, If only more Filipinos would have the same enthusiasm for discovering and promoting their own heritage sites. Wait, I'll let you finish that sentence. After all that I've seen and experienced in season eight of Dayao, here is my own takeaway. Heritage is not just a building or a monument or a landmark. It is the food we eat, the devotions we cling to, the landscapes that we grew up with, the values we espouse and hold dear, all of that and more. While built heritage may be a lasting, tangible sign of the past, it is nothing without our own sense of responsibility and awareness. And all this heritage will never cross over into the future unless we find the personal value in our hearts. After all, who are the best bearers of the knowledge and the pride? We are Dayao.